Good evening, mommies and daddies, brothers and sisters, uncles and aunties. God bless every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. And thank you very much for joining us tonight at our Monday night Bible club, wherever you may be watching us from. We want to specially welcome every one of us to the Monday night. And I want to say happy new moon to everybody joining us tonight, wherever you may be watching from. God bless every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. And uh, the Lord Almighty will honor us all in Jesus' name. In this month, our prayer is the Lord Almighty will be there for us all. He will grant each and every one of us the desires of our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank mm. you very much. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Thank you for always being there. On behalf of Jesus Christ, the owner of the church, we say God bless every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much for taking your time to come. Wherever you may be watching us from, we love you. We appreciate you. And this is your church, Generations of God Church International, the church where God answers every prayer. And that is the covenant we have with God. Praise the Lord. So to all our amazing mommies and daddies, brothers and sisters, uncles and aunties, God bless every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. And I want to especially let us know that the clock in United Kingdom has changed. So like many of us do know, uh, we are not aware yet, but the clock has moved forward. Praise the Lord. So some of us are like, oh, Pastor, we didn't see the early morning prayers. Maybe you got there when we finished, or you got there too early. Praise the Lord. So the clock has changed. So please spread the news. Let the people know that the clock in UK has changed. So now we are on the same time as uh, as Nigeria. As, yeah, we are on. We are now on a, a um, British uh, summer time. Yes, we have started the summer time now. Praise the Lord. God bless every one of us wherever we are tonight. Let's pray. Let's bow down our heads and pray. Father, Lord, we want to say thank you once again. Almighty God, we bless your holy name. We worship you. We adore you. We say you are God and you are good, Lord. May your name alone be praised forever, Lord. May your name alone be glorified, O Lord. May your name alone be exalted, Lord. Even as we come together tonight, once again, to learn, relearn, unlearn, and be taught by your words, Lord. Father, we invite you into our meeting tonight. We say, take your stage, O Lord, Baba. Daddy, have your way and do what only you alone know how to do. We cover each and every one of us here tonight in the blood of Jesus. We cover mm -hmm. those who are still on their way in the blood of Jesus. And everyone that will be watching later in the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. the Spirit of the Lord, minister to us all and bless each and every one of us. Thank you because you are our good God. And we thank you for this brand new month, the month of April. Our month of the Lord will help me. The Lord Almighty will help all of us in every area of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We thank you because you are the good shepherd. We pray in this new month, none of us will die before our time. The hands mm -hmm. of the Lord shall be upon us, Lord. Thank mm -hmm. you because you are our good shepherd. Have your way, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Once again, good evening, mommies and daddies, brothers and sisters, uncles and aunties. God bless every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. As we come together tonight, I pray it shall be well with us all in Jesus' mighty name. Mm -hmm. Amen. God bless you. Family, tonight we are going to diversify a little bit. I know we've been doing studying of the uh, minor prophets in the Bible for the past few weeks since we started the year. And also we've um, delved into studying the Bible characters. Last week, we studied about the man called Abraham. Mm -hmm. So today we are studying someone else. We are studying another Bible character. We, the reason why we are doing what we are doing is so that we can understand how God calls his own. Praise the Lord. So that maybe if you are here, there's a call of God in your life. And then maybe you are not sure whether it's God or not then you'll be able to understand what is God saying. Praise the Lord. I want to say thank you so much to everyone joining us tonight. 
The Lord Almighty will bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. God bless every one of us as we come together by the power in the name of Jesus. Once again, happy new month to everybody, wherever you may be watching or joining us from. We love you. We appreciate you. On behalf of Jesus and on behalf of the leadership team of GGCI Church in London, Croydon, we say God bless everybody in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight, we're going to look at another Bible character. And this is the man called Samuel. Praise the Lord. I'm sure we've heard Samuel in the Bible. Some of us, we've read that story many times. We know who Samuel was, what he did, how he came, and everything. So family, as you always do, I want to leave the platform open to everybody. What do we know about the man, let me use the word, the prophet called Samuel. What do we know about him? Family, remember, this is your Bible club. It's your club. So when we talk about club, we mean it's open to everybody to contribute. So what do we know about the prophet called Samuel? Praise the Lord. Samuel, we know the Samuel. Who is Samuel? What do we know about Samuel? Praise the Lord. Family, where are we tonight? Please make sure you contribute. What do we know about Samuel? What can you say about Samuel? At least we've, we've studied, we've read a lot about Samuel. What do we think, what do we know about Samuel? Samuel. God bless you, ma'am. Samuel's mom was Hannah. Beautiful, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, yes, ma'am. Yes. We, we all know the story about Hannah, so I won't go into Hannah. And then we know Samuel was a prophet. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma God I will leave you. it to somebody else to continue from that. Absolutely, mommy. Thank you so much for that, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Okay. Yes, sir. Elder Oyebuchi, good evening, sir. Unmute yourself, uh, sir. Good evening, sir. God bless you, sir. Evening, sir. I need to say. Uh, Samuel is a prophet and a priest. And um, he walked, those anointing were there. And um, of course, he ruled his, he was a leader. He ruled Israel mm -hmm. before they wanted a king. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was Israel's ruler. In fact, he, 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 was, he was the one, he ruled Israel. Now, until they they rejected the that rule God's rulership by virtue of um saying they wanted a king based on you know, and then he became that's how Saul emerged, and he was someone that came as a at that at the time where there was a need God had a need to fill a vacuum, you know, it, it based on the negotiation or the exchange between her mother and God her intercession and what she asked and that is Samuel became a product of that. So mm -hmm. God needed someone mm -hmm. and Samuel filled that vacuum. Absolutely. And as a king, uh, oh, well, as a ruler, prophet and a priest. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much for that, sir. Thank you very okay. much. For Thank you. God bless you, sir. Anyone, any more family? But now, when we ask questions on the in this platform, on this platform, everybody should be answering. By now, we should know all, all, all. Praise the Lord. Mommy started by saying Samuel was the son to Anna. And our elder Yebuchi has expanded it to say when God needed someone. So Samuel came on board, and uh, Samuel was the prophet of God. So anyone, what do you know about Samuel? You see, the reason why we are doing this study and teaching is so that one day, one day, maybe you are called to come and preach somewhere. You'll be able to say it boldly that there was a school I attended. I attended the school of GGCI. They, did, they taught us everything we need to know about God, about the characters of the Bible, about everything. And now you are a bold person to be able to teach. Who else? Can help us tonight. What do we know about Samuel family? Over to us. If we don't talk, we're just going to share the grace and go home. Praise the Lord. 
One day, one day, I hope it won't happen because it's not very pleasant to be talking. And it's only our leaders that, that are always talking every time. And this is an open forum to everybody because we are part of what the Lord is doing. It is your church family. It's not only for our mommies, our dicknesses, our dickens, our elders. It is for you. As long as you are part of this altar, you are part of this church. You are part of what God is doing. So who else wants to say something about someone else? I think I can see one of my sisters' um, message is coming up. Let me just quickly check. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. Oh, I'm trying to bring it up, but it's not. Okay. One of our mommies said he was born to Anna after his mother cried to the Lord. She made a vow to give him back to God. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much for that, man. That's from mommy Margaret. Thank you so much for that, man. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, another of my sister said, Samuel was a dedicated child of God who feared God, who was full of wisdom, who listened to God, even when he felt God was telling him to do, might get him into trouble with the king when God sent him to anoint David. Absolutely. He anointed the first two kings of Israel. Saul and David, absolutely. Thank you so much, mommy, Margaret. Thank you so much, sister Uluwa Fumilayo for that. Praise the Lord. You can see people are sharing. If you cannot say it, I'll type it. I'll read it out. I'll read it with your name. Praise the Lord. Good, good okay. Evening, sir. Yes, ma, auntie. God bless you, ma. Over to you. Um, Daniel is... Um... Samuel, ma. Sorry, I said Daniel. I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. Samuel. We are still in Easter holidays, so no problem. <laughs> Samuel is a judge and is a prophet. Beautiful. Is a I would call him a covenant child. Is a child that um the mother asked specifically from mm -hmm. God and promised to give back to God what that she did. Absolutely. And he's well, the prophet, like one of my sisters has said, that anointed um Saul yes, and sir. um David. Yes, and um, what else can I say about him? Absolutely. Is a is a prophet that basically follows what mm -hmm. whatever God says, and he's not afraid to do whatever God has sent him or whoever God sent him to. He's he uses wisdom, he has a lot of wisdom that he uses when he's sent to do, uh, to deliver messages. Yes, yes. So that's what I want to say, sir. Thank you so much, dearest auntie. Thank you very much for that. That's absolutely wonderful. Yes, he was a judge. He was a prophet. And he anointed, uh, auntie co corroborated what has been said. So he anointed the first two kings of the Bible. That's uh, Saul, Saul and David. Yes, God bless you, man. Thank you so much. Wonderful brother Crispin, what do you want to say? Over um, to good evening, sir. I was good gonna evening. say the same. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. Um, he anointed Saul, and he um dethroned Saul. God sent him to um take away the anointing of um Saul. Okay. In the battlefield. Okay, beautiful. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much for that. God bless yes, you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir, for that. Praise the Lord, family. Okay, what can we say about, you know, when we're talking about these Bible characters, we look at their strengths, we look at their weaknesses as well. Is there anybody who knows anything about Samuel's strengths or weaknesses? Anyone, please, family, feel free. You remember last week we studied about Abraham and we look at his strengths and we look at his uh, weaknesses. So what do we say about a wonderful prophet Samuel. What do we think is um, what is his strength? What is his weakness? Anyone? Family, feel free. Don't be shy. As we always say, it's your church. I, I always say it. It is God's church and it is everybody's church. So feel free to say something. What do we think? What was Samuel's strength? What or what were his strengths and what were his uh, 
weaknesses. Praise the Lord. Going, 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 going. Hello, hello sir. I'll try. Yes, okay. I'll try. Um, I will say uh, from uh, strength is a follower of God Absolutely. that does exactly what wherever God sends him is going and he's not afraid. Mm. He's one of the prophets that's not afraid to to speak. Rather, people are even afraid of, her, of, of him when he's coming. Um, the weakness I will say about Samuel is about his children. Mm. Because they did not follow in the way that is lined up for them as a, as a, as children of prophets. Mm. The way they the way they behave, I think that's part of his weakness. I don't know if he got carried away, he just oversight. Mm. But I will call that a weakness because um, what we've seen so far is that uh, prophets prophetess their children always deviate. Mm. For some reason that I can't explain. Mm. So that is one thing I can say because I know Samuel is strong in the Lord. He does what God asks him to do. But in that department, um, he was he failed. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, man. God bless you. Mm. In fact, that's one of the points I want to point out. Yes, sir. Elder, thank you so much, Auntie Yinka. Thank you very much for that. Brother Elder Yebuchisa, over to you. What do you want to say? Sir? Yes, sir. Um, in regard, there's, I'm, I'm a bit conscious about saying this. In regards to raising the children, you could see that the same thing that happened to Eli, Eli's children, mm. happened to his own children. Mm. So, and then from when we look at so many characters and the different things that happen, I, I believe there are some like. When um, Moses had an issue in regards to leadership, it was a counsel given to him by someone who, who did not, you know, don't know him to be like in fully anointed, but he gave a wise counsel. And when Moses took that to God, God said, what he said is right, Jethro, his father-in-law. So, and that was incorporated into the scheme and he followed it and he saved him a lot of stress. If Jethro wasn't there, he would have probably continued doing things the way and then and anything could have happened to him mm. now in regards to my colleague it might it looks like a weakness but the thing is for for me i'm looking at it there must be something of course it's a generational thing it's been a recurring thing it passed mm. on from the man he learned from and the only thing is was there any deliberate effort to find out why that that particular cycle was repeating itself. Mm -hmm. And of course, being in that position is a lot of battle, it's a lot of things. If they that can't get the man, they, they target the children. So, you know, that's the way I will look at it. So it's not really like um it's it's it's, it's for me to learn to understand that it's not just it's neither here nor there. That means you know, step up the game. Mm. I wouldn't <laughs> it happened, but that's what I would say. Okay. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for that. And uh, thank you so much for um, buttressing the points. I know there is Auntie Olaika said that said she doesn't understand why it will happen. And uh, thank you for bringing that. I will explain that to us why many men and women of God's children, they always go. They go to the other way. It's because if you read it very well, if you study them, they are so much engrossed in the things of God that they end up neglecting their own children. They are so much engrossed in the service of God that they end up neglecting their own children. And I say this, this is one of the lessons that, you know, when I was in the Bible school, they told us, they said, this dispensation, you must not neglect your children. You must not neglect your family. No matter how busy you are for God, always have time for your children. Have time for your family. Have time for your wife. Have time for your husband. Because those are the things the devil will use. 
I know a lot of men and women of God, or even people who say, but they serve God. Why can God? But let me say this. There are spiritual aspects to raising up children. And there are physical aspects as well. Because a child who is not well trained by the parents, outsiders will help them training. I'm not mentioning names. I've seen several men of God. Even in our dispensation, they are they have they have grown now that their children end up. There was a time a man of God was doing program, life program, and the son was swearing at him on the life program. On the life program. And now you won't believe the son is a pastor now. But those are the things people remember for Buddha. Wow. The son was swearing, swearing at his father on a life program. But today God arrested that child. So I'm we're still going to come to that. Although we can account it as a weakness, but it's a, when we see all their weaknesses, it is a strength for us to learn from. That if you are called by God, make sure you devote time for your family. And if we look at 1 Samuel chapter 8 for that, we will understand it more. 1 Samuel chapter 8 says, Now it came to pass, when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of his first born was Joel. Look at their names. And the name of his second, Abijah. They were judges in Beersheba. But his sons did not walk in his ways. They turned aside after the son's game, took bribes, and perverted justice. Look at it. The same thing Eli's children did. And you see, this is why I said God is a merciful God. God rejected Eli. And he didn't reject so, in some way. You see, God, that is why I say, sometimes to, to know God, you have to be very, we have to be very careful. The same thing Eli's children did, although those ones, the Bible said they were eating on the altar of God. They were eating the sacrifice that is meant for God. But it's almost the same problem. But God showed Samuel mercy. He didn't reject him. Eli died because of the children. And Samuel, the Bible said, he was very old when he died. So, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 4. Then all elders of Israel gathered around and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Look, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like the, all the nation. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord. Look at it. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hear heed the voice of the people in all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them, according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even to this day, with which they have forsaken me and served other gods. So they are going to do, they are doing to you also. Now, therefore, eat their voice. However, you shall solemnly warn, for warn them and show them the behavior of the king. Who will reign over them? Praise the Lord. You can see the children of Israel went to Samuel and they said they want a king. Praise the Lord. Praise be unto them. So let's read tonight. This first mentioning of Samuel, we can find it in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1. 1 Samuel, chapter 1. And that is the first mentioning of the book of of the name Samuel, praise the Lord. So let me tell us a little bit. Samuel was a leader of leaders, a chief advisor to the kings and military captains of Israel. When he spoke, everybody listened. As the prophet of God, Samuel anointed kings as the interpreter of the divine word. He counseled and challenged kings, serving as judge in the years just prior to source monarchy. Samuel embodied the three great functions of a prophet, a priest, and a king, as Jesus Christ would later. Samuel and Saul illustrate vividly how a ministry leader and a marketplace leader might relate to one another. The book begins with Samuel's birth and describes how Eli, the priest, mentored him as a young boy. The first several chapters depict his role as a judge and show how he led Israel back to God from Baal worship. As Samuel grew older, 
He appointed his sons to judge Israel, but this man did not walk in his ways. And the people demanded a king. Samuel anointed Saul in chapter 9 of 4 Samuel. And the king's flood reigns take, takes up the next 20 chapters of the book. Saul's insecurity leads to a volatile monarchy. He projects his fears onto others, resumes upon the priestly role of Samuel, and jealously pursues David after the young man defeats Goliath. Samuel dies in chapter 25, leaving the leadership of Israel in chaos. By the end of the book, Saul lies dead in battle. Praise the Lord. So, the first mentioning of Samuel, as we said, was in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1. And that's from verse 19. The Bible said, let me read it for us. Then they arose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord and returned, came home to their house at Ramah, and Elkanah knew Anna, his wife. And the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of time that Anna conceived and bore his son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked for him from the Lord. You can see where the name Samuel came from. Samuel means ask from God. Praise the Lord. I ask from God. So let's go to our teaching tonight. We are, If you are just joining us, good evening, mommies and daddies, brothers and sisters. Happy new month to everybody. Praise be unto the Lord. The Lord bless you. We thank everybody for joining us. Please be aware the UK time has changed. I know many of us are not aware. We are now in British summer time. British summer time. Praise the Lord. So our clock has moved forward. So please save the time and don't forget to join us in all our services. So we are studying the man called Samuel. As we said, Samuel literally means the name of God. And it sounds like heard by God. So Anna named him Samuel because God listened to her prayers. Praise the Lord. God listened to her prayer. My prayer for somebody is may the Lord listen to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what is the ancestry life of family life of Samuel? Samuel was born into an interesting family where his father was married to two women. You can see, these are the things I always say about God. I said sometimes we have to be careful with the way of God. If we remember the story of, um, of David we spoke about at uh, 24 hours of prayer, with all that David did, God still brought Solomon out of a very chaotic situation. That is why we should never, we should never ever play the role of God in any matter, please. We need to be very sensitive and careful. Who will have imagined that God will have brought somebody out of a polygamy? As I say, family, I'm a product of a polygamy as well. My mom is the second wife of a big family as well. Praise the Lord. So it is the grace of God that the Lord has brought us this far. Praise the Lord. It's only the grace of God that has brought many of us. So that is why when you begin to understand all these things, we will have a lot of mercy upon God's creation. Not that we are condoning anything, but it's only God who should be the utmost judge. Praise the Lord. So Samuel, interestingly, came from a family where his father married two women. However, he did not grow up with his family. So you can see, despite the fact that he came from a polygamous home, he didn't grow up with his father and mother. He grew up in the house of God under a life. Another good thing about Samuel was he did not learn the bad things Eli's children were doing. Rather, he focused on God. He could have learned their bad spirit, bad energy, bad attitude, and be the same. But no, because this one was a covenant child. So he learned the way of God. And that's why, to be honest, Samuel was actually one of the greatest prophets of the Bible. He was one of the most wonderfully used prophet of the Bible. So I continue. So he grew up serving under the Lord in the tabernacle of Shiloh. From a very young age, it was known that he dedicated, he was dedicated to God. 
Eli watched over him and clearly taught him the ways of the Lord. As a young boy in the tabernacle, it is likely he will run errands and do various tasks to serve the priests. So he learned everything because he was under Eli. Where was he born? When and where was he born? He was born around 1100 BC. That's 1,100 years before Jesus was born. So Samuel was born 1,100 years before Christ was born. He lived in a time when Israel was still a unified nation. Before Israel split, praise the Lord. So he was there when Israel was still together as a nation, one nation. At the beginning of Israel, it was led by judges, praise the Lord. Before then, Israel was being led by judges. So it was a unified kingdom with a king. And later, under Samuel's guidance, praise the Lord. The time period of David to Solomon was Israel's golden age, when it was the most prosperous and the powerful. So from David's time to Solomon's time, that was the time Israel was very prosperous, very, very. Samuel grew up in Shiloh and later lived in Ramah, according to 1 Samuel chapter 7. He grew up in Shiloh and he lived in Ramah, 1 Samuel chapter 7, if you read it all the way to 17, praise the Lord. However, his job as a prophet and as a judge took him from city to city, so he traveled a lot. You can see why his children were not trained. Praise the Lord. So Samuel was a traveling prophet. He was moving from city to city. So he traveled so much. He traveled a lot. If you read 1 Samuel chapter 7, you will see there verse 15 and 17. What are the events that surrounded Samuel's birth? Like many other women in the Bible, Hannah was barren. There were so many women in the Bible that were barren. And all of them cried to God and God heard. Only one person remained barren till death. Who can tell me who that person is? Only one person, family. Anyone? Anyone? Who do we think it was? Okay. Nobody knows? Hello, sir. Hello, Broshola. Yes, sir. Well, I, I, can't, I can't remember her name right now. But I know she was the wife of uh, King David, okay. the daughter of Saul. Yes. Yeah. I oh, can't I remember her name. I will help you. Her name starts with M. 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 I, can't, I can't really place my name on her. M. Micah. Oh, yeah, 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 yes, sir. Micah, yes, sir. Absolutely. 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 Thank you so much for that, sir. You are, you are, you've even, if I were to be an examiner, I would give you 100, 100. Because you said, the wife of David, the daughter of Saul. So, obviously, that's that's so. And we know why she became barren. Because she was mocking David. When David was dancing and the linen he was wearing left him and then, you know, those are the things. And Bible said, she remained barren until her death. Praise the Lord. I pray the Lord will not make us to be barren in Jesus' name. So, all the barren women in the Bible, is it that their husband was doing the work of God or they were doing the work of God or they were crying to God or God heard their voice and he showed them mercy. Praise the Lord. So, Anna was barren. Although she attempted many times to get pregnant, she could not. This issue at that point was almost a life defining for her. Because we saw how desperate she was. How she was so desperate for that baby to come. Her husband's other wife, Penina, continuously scoffed and tormented her because she bore many children, but Anna hadn't had any. It often happens in the Bible when a woman is barren and then gives birth that this is a sign the child will be very special. Have you not noticed? Joseph. When Joseph's mother gave birth, do you not see that Joseph, the mother too, went through it for a while? Rachel, she went through it for a while and Joseph became a star. Every child that is late to come, they always end up becoming stars. When you have a child that you gave birth to at a late age, at a later age, or look at the Bible. Is it 
John the Baptist, who we are going to study one time as well. You can see he was born at old age and he too, he came to do exploit. So Samuel too was one of a special kind. So the Bible says, Anna prayed earnestly to the Lord for a child. One of her prayers, she likely prayed many times about this, is recorded in the Bible for Samuel chapter one. It shows her sincerity and her strong faith. She made a special vow. I told us, when the battle is fierce, please make a vow with God. Learn to make a vow with God, family. We have spoken about vows, covenant. Make that vow with God. Tell You see, one thing I'm going to talk about, about this vow thing is, when you make a vow with God, always remind him. It's not as if he has forgotten, you know. Remind him, say, Father, this is new. I have this covenant with you. I made this vow with you. You remind him because whatever you have made that vow for, they say, listen to it. Hannah told God, give me a male child and I will give him back to you. You understand? So any covenant you have with God, every vow you have with God, please always remind him to say, whenever you are praying for open heaven, praying for miracles, family, always remind God. I'm telling you, it works. I'm telling you, it works. So don't just say, I made a vow. God knows. You keep praying about it. Say, Lord, remember how I have walked before you. Remember, like somebody wants to be say, Pastor, I have vows with God. And I, I know God will do it. And God will do it. Anything you covenant with God, it will make it happen. But you have to play your part to remind him. Rem remember in Isaiah 38, the Bible said, and Ezekiah faced war. And he told God, remember how I have walked before you with a blameless heart, with a pure heart. How I have walked before you. Family, any covenant, any vow you are with God. Maybe you are here, you don't have any vow. Make a vow. Please get it. Making vow with God is not bribery. It's not bribery. It's a way to tell God, I am connecting to the spiritual for the supernatural to be regular in my life. Praise the Lord for the supernatural to be regular in my life. And the Lord will do it in Jesus' name. So the Bible says she made a special vow to God that if he will give her a son, she will dedicate this child to serving the Lord for his entire life. We should also take note, a husband had the right to overrule his wife's vow. According to what God said in Numbers 30, the husband can override the woman's vow. But in this instance, the, woman, the man said, do as you please. Do as you please. Numbers chapter 30, verse 6 to 15. God himself told them, he said, if anyone make a vow, the husband can override it. Praise the Lord. But let me tell you, anything you make with God, nobody can override it. No matter how bad it is. No matter how painful it is. Do you know, God told Abraham, go and sacrifice your only child. The wife, he didn't tell the wife who. He went to go and do it. And God proved himself. Praise the Lord. God proved himself. So what am I saying? Also, the vow to not cut his hair is phrased in the same as Samson. So that means Samuel was a Nazarite. So he said no razor would touch his hair. So he was a Nazarite. Nazarites, they have the grace of God in them. They have the grace and the strength of God in them. So this was a special vow of dedication to the Lord for a period of time. In Samuel's case, it was to be applied to his entire life. So when you see all this type of vow, when Anna said it for the rest of his life, that's a serious vow, a very strong one. Remember Jephthah too, he made a vow. Anything that comes out of my house is what he was, and it was his daughter. And God gave him victory. And that's why he did what God told him to do, praise the Lord. Vows are very important. I told us the early money prayer you see us do. It is a vow. It's a covenant. It's a covenant to God that God will be waking up every morning, every day. As many people that are connected to it, no evil will befall them. No death will come near them. They will live to testify of your goodness. And family, God is proving himself. Praise the Lord. So what am I saying? 
Clearly, when Samuel grew up, he willingly devoted himself to the Lord and took up his promise made by his mother as his responsibility. What was his occupation? What was his training? What training did he have? What was his occupation? Samuel was trained as an apprentice at the tabernacle. So it wasn't like he was a farmer or a, a fisherman or anything or a, or a cat to the other. From the beginning of his life, he was already trained in the tabernacle in Shiloh. So his lineage is from the family of the Levi. Samuel's lineage is the Levi. So he came from the tribe of the Levi. But his father lived in Ephraim, according to 1 Chronicles 6, 16 to 30 and 33 to 37. While just as a boy, he was called by the Lord to be a prophet. As a young boy, I think it was age 12. When he was 12, that night, when the voice was calling to say, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, he went, so he grew up and he went to, to Eli. And Eli said, no, I did not call you. Go back and sleep. So it was, I think it was about age 12 when God called him first time. Praise the Lord. So his, his training and occupation was based in the tabernacle. Praise the Lord. His first message was to be delivered to Eli as a word of judgment from the Lord. As he grew older in 1 Samuel chapter 3, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 19 to 21, it was clear to everyone that Samuel was a prophet, probably because Samuel acted as a messenger of the Lord and because of his upright character and God's divine blessings on him. Samuel is recognized as the last judge of Israel prior to the establishment of kings as priest, judge, and a prophet. He settled disputes and unofficially led the nation. As one of my aunties said, he was a judge. So you can see he was a priest, he was a judge, he was a prophet, and he settled disputes and unofficially led the nation. So he was like uh, the one, let me put it, behind the scene leader. He would be telling the people, the kings, what to do, what not to do. So he was also God's appointed kingmaker. You see the grace he had. There are people who are called kingmakers. So family, please, if there's any prayer you should be praying, Lord, make me a kingmaker. Do you know what that means? That through you, even your own offspring, they must be great in life. Lord, that is one of my prayers. I say, Father, family, please always pray, Lord, let me be a king maker. Let me be a queen maker. So that through you, by your offspring, there will be great people. It is a prayer for greatness in your children's life. Father, let me be a king maker. Let me be a queen maker. Praise the Lord. You know, some of these prayers, we don't know them. Now that we are understanding them, you should take it serious that, okay, I think the reason why things are not happening, maybe when I begin to be a family, one of the greatest things about my life, when I see people around me succeeding, I know that I'm fulfilled. I know that God has fulfilled something in my life. So please, my prayer for everybody is, through you, by you, in you, from you, you shall become king and queen makers in Jesus' mighty name. So we can see the importance. He, he was God's and appointed king maker. His anointing of Saul and David would have given legitimacy to these kings in the eyes of the people and show that it was God's doing. So what is Samuel's place in history? Samuel was the last judge. So according to your Bible, please take note, as we say, Bible club, knowing the Bible. He was the last judge. There were so many judges. We've studied Deborah. We've studied so many other characters of the judges in the Bible. But Samuel was the last judge of the Bible, of the era. And do you know that among all of them, he was the most upright. Apart from Deborah, Samuel was the most upright of Israel. So he was very important to Israel's transition from a loosely knit tribal alliance to a strong kingdom. He lived during a very corrupt era for leaders. The air priests, allies, cousins were extremely corrupt. <coughs> 
and immoral. They were extremely corrupt and immoral. On the outside, they kept running the tabernacle as normal. But inside, they live decadent lives and carry out their system of corruption and greed behind closed doors. As the head priest, they were very influential and foolishly counseled Israel to take the act to fight the Philistines. Do you know that it was the children of Eli that let, let them carry the act away because of their foolishness? So they let, they made them carry the act, and they led, which led to being taken away from them. So Samuel stood out as a man of integrity and uprightness. Now, what are the Samuel's weaknesses as we have started earlier? And one of the very important ones that was brought out by our speakers tonight was one of his weaknesses, he failed to raise his children well. He failed to raise his children well. According to 1 Samuel chapter 8, please read that at your convenience. Even when the people said they don't want his children, he failed to raise his children well. Sadly, this seems a typical of many great leaders in the Bible. It was also true of Eli, but Samuel did not learn from Eli concerning that. He said he made the same mistake Eli did. It is true that it is not necessary Samuel's fault that his children didn't follow God. Even a perfect parent could have prodigals. That's true. When a parent, even no matter what, family, there's a case somebody brought to us recently. The father and the mother, they did all they could do for this child. Took him to private school. Did everything. The father and the mother, they sacrificed so much for this child. May the devil not enter our children. No. You know what? This child beat hell out of his father and mother. Their only child. Despite all that they did, this child made life unbearable for the parent. Praise the Lord. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. So, even a perfect parent could have prodigal. This is why we need to continually pray for our children, no matter what. But there's a generally a strong correlation between parenting and how the children turn out. Praise the Lord. Samuel was too busy doing ministry, so he didn't have enough time for his family. Perhaps he would have left the raising of the children to his wife or to hire the help. So we don't know the exact reason his children turn out this way. But these are both poor excuses. The responsibility falls finally on the head of the family, the father and the husband, to make sure that their children do well. Praise the Lord. Another thing I would say was the weakness of Samuel, although he's not a very big one, is was when he wanted to go and annoy David. When he saw um, the first one, uh, praise the Lord, I, Abimelech, or, no, no, Abimelech, he saw the first one, he said, surely Abinadab, ah, surely this is God's anointed. He saw Abinadab, surely this is God's, you know, he, he assumed that was God's anointed. But he wasn't. God had to tell him, so I've not chosen this one, no. Even I've rejected him. You can see how it is. Even when God called him when he was with Eli, Samuel, Samuel, and he ran to, to, to Eli. And Eli said, go, I didn't call you. So you could see that he was trying to learn the voice of God. So that's another thing for us to understand. When God sends you an errand, if you have not got the call confirmation, I beg, don't say anything. I'm begging you. Don't assume for God. Because you see somebody statue. Because you see somebody this. Because you see somebody answer. Because you see somebody wear this. Does not mean God has called them. You see, when he saw in 1 Samuel chapter 16, the Bible said, as soon as he saw Abinada, he said, surely this is God's anointed. Never assume for God what you are not sure about. Let God dictate to you. You understand? And you can see, he had to ask Jesse, are these all your children? Until the seventh one was called. You can see. So, never assume for God what you are not sure of. Praise the Lord. If you are not sure, go back to him. Ask him, Daddy, show me direction. Praise the Lord. Sometimes when people come for counseling, 
And I don't know what is happening. I don't know what. I say, give me time to pray about it. If I hear God, I will let you know. But for now, everything is not clear. I will let you know. There was somebody who sent me a message yesterday. And if you see the message this person sent, even when I was reading it, my heart was so, so pained. I cried a bit. I was like, why would this person go through all this battle? Then God told me this morning, he said, that is not the plan he has for that person. The plan I have for that person is bigger than what they are doing now. But no matter what, it can be a very painful thing to do something again and again and not getting results. But God said, that is not the plan I have for that person. And I tell you, family, when you hear God, it is the best to family, it is the best. Praise the Lord, it is the best. God will bless all of us in Jesus' name. So where are we now? So he says, okay, what do we think? What do we think we, um, we should learn from what Samuel did concerning the weakness we have said now? Concerning, do not become so involved in serving God that you neglect your own family. After God is your family. family. I'm telling you, after God. Don't neglect your family. I told us, even when my sister said it, I said, don't neglect God before um, with, with, all, with all your work for God. Don't neglect him, oh, praise the Lord. So do not neglect God. Do not neglect God while, do not neglect your family while serving God. Your first, as a parent, your first ministry is to your family and after that to the whole of church, of God, of church of God. So somewhere seemed to take personally that Israel wanted the king. So he took it very personal. When Israel said they wanted the king. So he took it. So this was due to maybe feeling like he was losing his followers. You know, for Samuel chapter 8, when they said they wanted the king, he took it very personal. So family, that's another thing to learn from. Never take anything God has given you too personal. Praise the Lord. He is God. That is why he's the almighty God. Praise the Lord. And the Lord will follow. So God told Samuel that they were rejecting him and not Samuel. Why did God feel the need to tell Samuel this? It seems to be out of a desire to comfort Samuel and not become discouraged that his hard work in leading them has gone to waste. It is not hard to imagine how Samuel felt. Praise the Lord. So he felt very like, oh, is this it? So that means it's no longer relevant. But because he was already getting old as well, they said, your children are not the right people to take over. So we'd rather you give us somebody to be a king. For any of us who have done much ministry, it is easy to feel personal at a stake. Whenever you feel like people are not appreciating you or you have put so much effort and it's not being seen as effort, especially when people throw more stone at men or women of God. It can become very personal. You can see that sometimes when men of God, you see them, it's like they sacrifice all their life for certain things and nothing is rewarded. That can be the moment of feeling, being like rejected. Is that it? As I said, the ministry of Jesus, I'm still studying it. With all the miracles and signs and wonders Jesus did, he was still the rejected. Family, God, serving God is very, is, is very sweet, is very unique, and is very, very mind-boggling as well. Praise the Lord. So we should take an example from the business world. Let's, let's, let me use an example now. So let's say a guy we, we call Chris becomes famous accountant. I'm just using this as an example now. He spends a year training an apprentice. Day after day, he tells the apprentice everything he knows. He hopes that this apprentice will become his partner. But instead of helping Chris, his apprentice abandons Chris and goes to a rival company where he uses the knowledge Chris taught him to try to steal Chris' customer. You can see. Instead of the, the apprentice to say, okay, let me use my what you have taught me to help as well. He now uses it to steal all Chris' customers. That is where that personal pain comes. So this is perhaps a bit like feeling of betrayal. Samuel had 
the one that he has put all his life on it and he felt rejected towards the end of his calling. May God not reject us. May we not be rejected in the name of Jesus Christ. So our response should be during this time is we should avoid feeling of rejection. Avoid feeling rejected. Praise the Lord. We need to realize at times that the work we do is for God's glory, not our own glory. It can be painful, but it is for God's glory. When people reject it, they reject God, not us. When people accept it, they are accepting God and the glory and the credit is to God and not us. So why was he demanding a king a bad idea? What is the problem with having a king? What did Jesus say is the difference between God's model for leadership and man's? So their motivation for wanting a king was to be like all the other nations around them. And you know, and that's a very bad motivation. So they wanted to be like the other nations. So, and that's another thing, weakness of Saul was a fear Saul of Samuel, sorry. Another weakness Saul exhibited them. Samuel exhibited it was he fear Saul. When God told him in 1 Samuel chapter 16, go and choose for me a king. Go and anoint for me a king. Saul said, ah, if I go, I will die. Saul will kill me. And you know, a lot of, a lot of bad, let me use the word, bad people, they've turned it around. Does that mean God is a liar? God is not a liar. I can only tell you God is a God of patience and wisdom. God gives time for the wicked people to repent. So when God told him, tell him you have come to make a sacrifice. Is he not what he came to do? He came to make sacrifice. But Samuel was scared of Saul. Why would you be scared of human being when the God who sent you is behind you. Family, take that on board. Never be scared of mere human being. The only fear we should have is the fear of God. Instead of rejoicing that God was going to choose a new king, he responded to this news in fear for his own life. Ah, Samuel is Saul is going to kill me. So instead of him to say, thank you God. So eventually we can have a new king that will listen to your voice. Family, I'm going to end it there. Please, tonight, I want you to take this lesson with you. Never fear human. The person, the only being you should fear is the almighty God. Fear no human being. Fear nobody. The only person you should fear is God. So, Saul, I'm sorry, Samuel, he feared his life. He said, ah, even if Samuel, Saul is going to kill him, must he fear? He said, oh, Saul is going to kill me. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1 to 3. Praise the Lord. When you know the God that sends you on around, you won't panic or you won't fear anything. And the Lord will help all of us in Jesus' name. So Samuel responded, because he fears for his life. Although we know that Saul was a wicked person. But look at it. He tried to kill David many times. Did he succeed? He didn't succeed. That is a lesson for us to learn from. If God sends you on errand, he will always back you up. Praise the Lord. He will always back you up. So this was certainly a natural reaction as well, which shows us Samuel is indeed human, like all of us. But as, at the same time, this reaction shows that at that moment, his faith was a little bit weak. That is the human part of Samuel when he was uh, fearing. Praise the Lord. And this is a lesson for all of us to learn from. The, what you fear. Don't let that fear conquer you. The Bible says in, in Job chapter 3, Job said, that which I greatly fear has come upon me. Praise the Lord. May what we fear not come upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll continue this story next time. Praise the Lord. We'll continue. I will tell you the number five, which I've already mentioned. Then we'll talk about the strength and we'll talk about the question and answer to learn from. So what do you think about the story of Samuel? Praise the Lord. Once again, thank you so much, mommies and daddies. Once again, happy new month to everybody. Please don't forget our clock has changed. And please take it from us because we've just concluded our <laughs> 24 hours with God. Family, there's no midnight 
uh, three midnight for this month to praise the Lord. So all of us should go and sleep. We'll see you 5 a.m. Praise the Lord. Somebody has already said, Pastor, are we doing midnight prayer tonight? No. Uh -uh. Look at the voice now. The body is willing, but the voice is uh, praise the Lord. So we need to thank God for his grace upon us. This month, the Lord says, is our month of divine help. So I leave that with you. Ask God for help. I don't know what you want God to do for you. Tell God tonight, Father, I need help. And the Lord will help all of us in Jesus' name. The Lord said, it is my month of divine help. And that is Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. The Lord will help us. Somebody said, the Lord will help me in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and ask God tonight. Say, Father, as I come to you in this fourth month in year 2024, help me, oh God. Help me, my Father. Help me, my King. Help me, oh God. Help me, Lord. I want you to help me in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you, oh God, to help me in the name of Jesus. I want you to help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you once again, mommies and daddies, brothers and sisters. Looking forward to see you tomorrow morning, 5 a.m. by the special grace of God. Let's share the grace together and the grace of our Lord Jesus you, Christ. Jesus Christ. The Lord of God. And, God. and the grace of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. The goodness and mercy shall be lost all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. What the Lord has done for us, one hallelujah. Hallelujah.